Spree is a full-featured e-commerce solution that can be integrated into a Rails app. So if you need to turn your Rails application into a store that sells products, Spree is one of the quickest ways to do this. In this episode, I will show you how to set up Spree in a new Rails app so you can get an idea of how it works and to see if it fits the needs of your application. Now before I get started, I'm first going to install ImageMagick because this is something that Spree relies on to handle its image processing. Now the easiest way to do that I know of is using Homebrew. I could just do Homebrew install ImageMagick and that will install that for us. And so now with ImageMagick installed, I'll just create a new Rails app. I'll call it Store. Now Spree can also be integrated into an existing application, but I think it's a good idea to try it out in a new app first just to get an idea of how it works. So let's go into there and open that up in TextMate. And then I'll go into the gem file and add Spree to the bottom of here. Now I'm also going to specify the version here because Spree changes quickly and this is currently the latest version, but who knows what the next version will be and what will be different. And then run the bundle command to install Spree and the many gem dependencies. And then once that is done, you could just run Rails generate Spree site to turn your application into a Spree site. Now this command does quite a lot here. One thing it does is copy over the various migration files. Uh, this is necessary to create the tables for Spree to run. And it also customizes several other files here mostly under app assets. Notice that it's removing the application JS and CSS files here, so be aware of that. If you've customized these files, you'll need to integrate those changes into how Spree organizes uh, the assets. So if you take a look under that app assets directory here, you can see that each section is split up into an admin and store section here. And that is so that you can keep the assets separate between the store side, which is the public side, and the administration side. And you can see if you check out the all CSS file here or the all JS file that it requires these files which are inside of Spree so it automatically loads those up. Now there is one more command we have to run here to set everything up and that is rake db bootstrap here and what that will do is run the various migrations uh, that are generated by Spree but first it asks us if it's okay to destroy the database content yeah that's fine and then you can see it runs the migrations to create the various tables and set up the database and then it ends up asking us for information for an admin user. So you can set up a custom email and password here. I'll just use the defaults they provide. And then it asks us if we want to load some sample data. So let's just say yes here, and that will just load in some sample products and orders. And so now once that's done, we could just start up our Rails application server and check it out. So here's what it looks like. It looks pretty plain because there's no theme by default, but we do have a full e-commerce store running here loaded up with the sample products that they provided us. And so we could complete a checkout process here if you want just to try it out. And there is also an administration section available. Just go to localhost uh, slash admin and that will bring up the admin section, actually a login page first so that you can log into your admin user, which is uh, spree at example.com and spree123 as the password. So we'll log into here. And then the admin section is pretty full featured as well, allows you to fully see, uh, you can see the orders that were placed here, full with graphs and charts, and you can check out the various orders and products and customize them here and edit them in the admin section. And there are also various configuration options that you can choose from here, including the ability to change the various payment methods you have available. So you can see here there are different payment methods for different environments, and if we choose to edit one, we can change the uh, payment gateway here to anything we want. And when we change it, it offers various fields for entering the proper credentials for that payment gateway. So this is really great, but what if you want more control over exactly how the store looks to the customer? Well, check out our store here. And you can see right now the store looks very bland because currently there's no design. Well, I wanna spend the rest of this episode showing you various ways that you can customize the look and behavior of the store. Now Spree supports themes and extensions, and here's one theme called the blue theme, and it serves as a nice example of how you can customize Spree. And this is a Rails engine, and pretty much everything in Spree is a Rails engine, which you can use to override various things under the app assets and overrides directory here. You can see exactly how this works here. But to install it, we can just add this to our gem file. So I'll just paste that into the bottom here, and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. 
Now to get this theme to work, I also found it necessary to change the stylesheet store all.css file. And instead of including the default ones, just include the store screen file, which is the one provided by the theme. Now I don't know if this is completely correct, but it seems to work for this situation. So now the application looks like this quite a bit different, and whether or not you use themes directly, it serves as a nice example of how you can customize the look of a Spree app. Now let me show you a few ways that you can customize something individually. For example, this logo right here, you likely want to change the logo and provide one of your own, so let's first of all see where this image is stored. I'll open it up in a new window here, and notice it's under the assets directory under admin bg spree underscore 50. And so this is something that's provided by the Spree engine, but we can override it in our application. Now off camera, I just made that directory in our application under images admin bg, and I just put the Rails logo into here, but let's rename it to Spree underscore 50, so that way it overrides that image. Now you might need to restart your app for it to catch that new directory, but now it displays the Rails image instead of the Spree logo. Now another way we can configure the logo is through the Spree configuration. And if you check out the source file, which I'll link to in the show notes, you can see there are a lot of configuration options and the defaults are mentioned here. So you can see there is a logo option and that is the default. And so we can override this to uh, be whatever we want. Now Spree provides an entire preferences system that allows you to configure these options in various ways, such as through the database or through an admin panel or we could just do it straight through Ruby here. So in this example, I'm just going to go under config initializers directory and make a new file here called spree config.rb. And then what you can do in here is call spree config.set and then we can set the logo attribute to whatever we want. So we can say, let's put it under store at rails.ping. So this means I can change this logo and place it under the store directory and then rename it to rails.ping instead of the other name. And so now visiting our application, the logo still works, but if we open it up, you can see it's in the new location. Now, another way to do customizations is by overriding parts of a Spree template. And to do that, you have to find the template in the Spree source code, which isn't really that difficult, but one thing to be aware of is that make sure that you're browsing the source code of the same version of the gem that you're using. So in this case, instead of browsing master, we want to go under tags and use the version of the gem that we're using here, which is 071. And now once we select that, then we can go under core, which is going to be the Spree core gem. Most of the functionality is in here. And you can go under app and then views. And then inside of here, we want to go under layouts because the logo is part of the layout. And then you can see we have a Spree application layout file here. And this is a template we want to override because this contains the logo right here. Now there are a couple of different ways that we can override this if we want to change the way it looks. Uh, one way is just to copy this entire layout file into the same location in your application, which is under app views layouts. And then you, whatever changes you make there, it will use that template instead of the one inside of the engine here. Now another way is to use a gem called the deface. Let me show you that here. Now notice inside of the application, there is an overrides directory here that Spree generated, and this is where you would use deface to override parts of a Spree template. And so we can create a new file here, let's call it logo.rb. Now if you check out the readme and the deface project here, uh, you can see various examples of how it works. And here's an example, we could just copy and paste this. So I'll just paste this into our override file here. Now we don't have to install deface separately because it's already a dependency of Spree. And now there are several options you can pass into this. Uh, the virtual path is the path to the ERB template. And we can just, uh, that's under layouts slash uh, Spree application. And you don't have to supply the, the extension there. Now the name could be anything you want, such as logo. And let's say we want to replace the contents of the logo div. And so that would just be hash logo because you pass in a CSS identifier here, and then we just wanna replace it with, uh, let's say, store. So now you can see by visiting the application, our logo image has been replaced with the text store. So that works, but I still need to style this a bit. And so we could do some styling under the style sheets store directory here, and it's a good practice to make a separate file for this. I'll call it uh, layout.css.scss. And so we wanna change our logo, and let's give it a font size of 32 pixels, and uh, we'll change the color to white. 
So now when you visit the application again, you can see there's our stylized store text. So that's how you can customize Spree, both changing the template and just adding a bit of styling in the CSS. Well, that's it for this episode. However, there's a lot more to Spree that I have not covered here. I encourage you to check out the Spree guides for more information. You can see by the guides index here that there's a topic for pretty much everything about Spree, so check that out. Thanks for watching. In the pro episode this week, I'm going to walk you through the internals of the Rails initialization process and show you exactly what's going on behind the scenes when you start up the Rails server. This will also give you a better idea of how engines and rail ties work. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.